guys and welcome to PlayStation Access and to this an introduction to the world of Final Fantasy 14. Now while I love Final Fantasy 14 I know the size and scope of joining an MMO can be quite scary for some new players. So with a brand new expansion Final Fantasy 14 Stormblood on the way we've decided to put together a video that should cover some of the basics, help get you started and to help you understand how the world and the game works. While this isn't absolutely everything, because I'm really not trying to blow people's minds, it's perfect for anyone who is like me and was brand new to an MMO, or even for those who are completely new to the world of Final Fantasy. Hopefully you should find some useful information in the video, and if you're ready, we'll get started. Number 1. PS4, PS4 Pro and PC all play together. This means you can play with your friends no matter where they are, but, if you did originally start on PlayStation 3, the support for this console is ending with Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. However, there is a free PS3 to PS4 upgrade program in place until December 2017. If you're playing on PS4, you can choose how you want to play. You can play using the DualShock 4, or you can play with a mouse and keyboard by simply plugging them into your console, changing the control scheme at a flip of a switch. Final Fantasy XIV doesn't have a built-in voice chat, so if you are playing on DualShock, a wired or wireless keyboard will still work alongside this and it's great for chatting to people in-game. The HUD is also fully customizable. Point number two, you don't need PlayStation Plus. Final Fantasy XIV is a subscription-based MMO. This means you pay monthly, however, you do not need PlayStation Plus as well. You can sign up for 30, 90 or 180 days and time cards are also available from retailers such as Game, Amazon and even from the Square Enix store. If you aren't sure about jumping into Final Fantasy XIV, you can head to the PlayStation Store and download a free demo and play up until level 35. Point number three is all about picking a server and creating a character. The server is the world in which your character lives. While you can join any, no matter where you live in the world, you might want to consider picking a server in your region. There is European, North America and Japanese servers and some are busier than others. You can create your own character which starts with picking the race. You can choose from the here, the Elizan, the adorable Lalafels, Makotes, Rogadin, and the Arar. You can play any race you like, and while it does have some slight effect on your stats, it's negligible, so just pick what you like best. You can also pick a birthday based on the Eorzean calendar, and while this will have a slight effect on your elemental resistance, it's again negligible, so uh, I just picked my own birthday. It's important then when you're picking your server you check where your friends are currently playing because while you can form parties across servers to run dungeons together, this is the only time you'll see them. For example, if you're a Moogle and they're on Odin, you won't be able to explore the world together. If you don't like your appearance, don't panic. You can change your cosmetic appearance at any time by visiting the Athedition when you complete a level 15 quest. You can also change your character's race at any time by using a Fantasia potion. You'll be gifted one of these with your first 30 days of playtime in Final Fantasy XIV and additional potions can be purchased from the Mog Station. Point number four is all about picking a role. Now there are three main roles in Final Fantasy XIV, the first being DPS. And DPS means damage per second and these classes are all about dealing as much damage as possible, often as quickly as possible. On the whole, DPS are split into two main categories, ranged for dealing damage at a distance and melee for dealing damage up close. DPS classes are not designed to take as much damage as a tank class and they often need to turn their attention to handle any specific battle mechanics that might happen in the dungeons. Next is being a healer. Now this one almost speaks for itself. You'll be using healing magic and supporting buffs and it's your job to keep the team alive. Don't worry, healing classes do also provide you with an option for dealing damage so you can defend yourself, even go through the story mode, or if you fancy it, just chip in with the rest of the team. Finally, a tank, and I don't want to be biased, I love playing as a tank, but tanks are expected to be the first into battle because they're built to take large amounts of damage. 
It's their job to take the enemy's hate. Now, this is commonly known as aggro in other MMOs, but actually called enmity in Final Fantasy XIV. And it's your job to hold it so that other members of the team can deal damage to enemies without taking hits. On the whole, tanks are not designed to do as much damage as a DPS, but like healers, they're strong enough to go through the story on their own, and you can still chip in with the rest of the team if you need to do some extra damage. Final Fantasy XIV also includes a range of crafting and gathering classes, and if you ever want to take a break from dealing damage and running dungeons, these provide a great distraction. Point number five is all about picking a class and picking a job. Now there are nine starting classes in fourteen. Gladiator, Pugilist, Marauder, Lancer, and Archer, and then Conjurer, Thermiturge, and Arcanist. There is also a Rogue, which is actually the only class that is available from level 10 and not from the start. The class you pick will also determine where you start in the game. For example, Marauders start in the port city of Limsa Liminsa, Pugilists will start in the desert city of Uldar, and archers in the forest nation of Gridania. But don't worry, all cities will become available to you no matter where you start. Picking the wrong starting class, please don't panic. From level 10, you can visit different guilds across the world and start a new class without losing any of your progress from your previous class. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can play and master them all. When you hit level 30 in any of these classes, you'll be able to take them to the next level and unlock your job by following specific quests. There are a total of 13 jobs in Final Fantasy XIV, with two more coming in the Stormblood expansion, and jobs not only give you more power, but a greater specialization, ideal for progressing in the game. For example, if you want to become a warrior, you need to level Marauder. So let's run through those jobs. To start, there is the White Mage, a staple healer and one of the most iconic classes from the Final Fantasy franchise. Scholars. Now, these are healers that use fairies as pets, and these pets help keep their teammates alive and healed. Astrologian. A class that uses celestial magic drawn from a deck of cards in order to heal and support their teammates. Paladin, the epitome of the Holy Knight. They use sword and shield to take the hate and keep the enemies away from the party. Warrior, now this is for those who like their tanks served with a side of aggression. The warrior uses their great axe to take the hate and hold the enemies. Dark Knight. Using a two-handed greatsword, this is the newest tank to arrive via Final Fantasy XIV Heavensward, perfect for those who like their tanks on the dark side. Monk is a melee DPS class that uses hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now this is perfect for those who want to get up close to their enemies and let their fists do the talking. Dragoon, now this is another melee DPS class and well known from the Final Fantasy franchise. In jokes about the Dragoon being down are common, but don't worry, you'll understand the 14 in jokes soon enough. Ninja, a further melee DPS class that was introduced towards the end of Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. They wield dual daggers and use ninjutsu techniques. Machinist is a ranged DPS class that arrived in Heaven's Ward. With steampunk-esque aesthetics, they wield guns and turrets to support the team and do damage to enemies. Bard, a further ranged DPS class and another classic job from the Far Fantasy series. Now these guys were using bows and arrows before it was cool. They can also use songs to support their teammates in battle. Summoner, a magical ranged DPS class who summon powerful creatures to aid them in battle and deal damage to their enemies. And Black Mage, the famous magic-wielding ranged DPS from the Final Fantasy series. Perfect for those who want to fuel their inner arsonist by constantly using fire magic. There are also two new classes arriving in Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. Samurais will be wielding their katanas and playing as a melee DPS for getting close to deal massive damage. While Red Mage is a ranged DPS that still moves quickly around the battlefield, wielding a rapier and dealing magical damage. Point number six is all about something called the Hall of Novice, and no, there's no shame in using it. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, or you just want to practice and have a better understanding of the game's mechanics, this is where you need to go. 
From level 15 onwards, you can use the registration points around Eorzea, of which there is one in every starting city, to enter the Hall of Novice and take on training exercises specific to the class you're playing as. More senior players can also sign up to become mentors who can provide support via a private chat called the Novice Network, where newer members can ask the veterans for advice. You can also access the Mentor Duty Roulette, which assigns mentors to parties who are looking to run dungeons. Point number seven is all about the story in Final Fantasy XIV and being able to play it as a solo campaign. Yes, Final Fantasy XIV is an MMO, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a fantastic story. In fact, it's up there for me with some of the best Final Fantasy stories. But if you want to play and experience this story on your own, you can do that. Now, the game does require you to team up and take on four and eight player dungeons at certain points to progress the story, but you can sign up as a single player via an in-game tool known as the Duty Finder, and the game will automatically team you up with other players who are also looking. If you are signing up with a few friends but still don't quite meet the full party requirements, the Duty Finder will just fill in the gaps. A four-man team will consist of a tank, a healer and two DPS, while an eight-man team consists of two tanks, two healers, and four DPS. There are later 24-man raids for you to play in the game, and these consist of three eight-man parties. A party finder also exists in the game, and this is often used for people looking to complete very certain trials, dungeons, or raids in the game, and they need players with specific skills, levels, or abilities, while the duty finder is for random parties. What they're looking for is often detailed in the party finder and more often than not will require a higher level player. Now, if point number seven was about a great story and playing it solo, point number eight is about joining and making free companies and playing with people. For those of you who want to join a group to play Final Fantasy XIV, you can join or with three or more people form your own free company. Now, free companies are commonly referred to as guilds in other MMO titles, and within this game are commonly shortened to FC. Free companies have individual names and short acronyms that appear next to your in-game name so that people can see what FC you're a part of. I'm part of an FC called the Nashi Red Wings, of which I'm sure several are watching this video and probably judging me, and we use MOG as our acronym. So if you're on Moogle server and you see a MOG run past, give them a wave. They're a member of my FC. To join a free company, you must either be invited or have your request to join the free company accepted. When you're in a free company, you get a number of new features, including access to the free company chest, a place where FC members drop off or withdraw items, weapons and money, and get access to a special FC chat channel. Bigger FCs might also choose to pull their money together and purchase a house. As a member of the FC, you'll be able to teleport to the FC house and purchase your own room in the house, which you can decorate. Now, if you're not in an FC, don't worry, you can still purchase your own house, but it can take some time to save the money. Remember, you can only join one FC at a time, so you'll need to leave before you can join a new one. They're great ways to meet other players, get support, and if you're really lucky, make some great friends that you'll keep with you forever. Now, if you're still with us and we haven't blown your mind by talking about DPS classes, jobs, novices, free companies and everything else in between, I thought I'd make a final bonus point. Now, if you're tired of running dungeons and want to take a break, Eorzea is not just a beautiful world to explore. And yes, taking photos is a hobby and a pastime. There are plenty of other things to keep you busy. Pay attention to the initial loading screen to find out when some of the many seasonal events are taking place. These events give you a chance to unlock exclusive items, some of which might never be seen again, with new quests and stories to undertake. No two events are the same. From level 15, you can head to the Gold Saucer. Now, this is something Final Fantasy VII fans should recognize and take part in the daily and weekly lotteries, enjoy some carnival games, and even take part in the Chocobo races. Yes, me and Lucky Seven don't race often, but when we do, we do take first place. Triple Triad is also available, and yes, for the Final Fantasy VIII fans asking, it does play Shuffle or Boogie. 
Now, Triple Triad isn't just limited to the Gold Saucer, even though this is where you can buy and trade in some of the cards you might collect. You can actually challenge any NPC over Eorzea that has the card symbol above their head, and you can challenge friends and fellow players in certain areas around the world. Now, if PvE is no longer your thing, then with the arrival of Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood, you can start entering into PvP matches from level 30. Previously, you had to be level 50. Now, these take place in the Wolves' Den, where you can take part in such things as 4v4 or 8v8 PvP, and when you're a higher level, heading to the front line, where up to 72 players split into three teams battle it out. When taking part in PvP, you'll now have special actions, special hotbars, and special stats, with a chance to unlock new gear. Yes, just being good at running dungeons won't be enough. You'll take some time and some skill to master PvP. There you go, that is my introduction to Final Fantasy XIV. Now, while it isn't absolutely everything you might need to know, I don't want to blow anybody's minds here, these are certainly some of the things that me and some of my FC wished we had known or had explained to us when we first started. If you're a veteran player, please comment below. Maybe you have some other tips or bits of information that you think new players would find really useful. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to PlayStation Access because there is always loads more coming up from the world of PlayStation.